Good morning, Caleb. Good morning, Valmark Firms. I'm Larry Ripka, the CEO of the Valmark Financial Group, and this is our company's president, Caleb Callahan, our chief operating officer. And good morning, like everyone. Sh- good morning. I'd like to share some great results for the 2020 year. Talk about some of the trends that led to this and where we see the business going in the future. So I'd like to just hit some highlights. We had really, by all accounts, our best year ever with growth in sales, growth in profitabilities, adding firms, and really executing. Our our firms rated us 10 points higher in terms of the services that we offered. So Caleb, what are some of the things that led to that? How were we able to execute on that? Yeah, well, we, we did a number of things well, but I think the biggest was in the technology and the process during the pandemic. And I look most specifically to e-signature. We were doing hundreds of e-signatures before last year. And last year we did thousands in both the investments and the insurance business. And, and that's really, I think, what drove the efficiencies. Well, Caleb, we've got a great internal team and we're, as a smaller firm, able to make some pretty big changes. And I'd like to thank our internal team and our member firms for adopting to some of this. Now, some of this was um, macro. One thing that impacted particularly the insurance industry is this just slam in bond yields. And it really made the separate account products so dominant, which really helped a firm like Bellmark, which is a broker dealer first. You've talked about this second thing about with all these short product time deadlines, our firms were able to execute quickly on e-signature solutions. And we also had a record number of firms that came to call Valmark home. So a number of producers that in the past may have given up a securities license recognize that in order to have what's best for their clients and act in their best interest, it now required having variable products. As we looked at sales, what were um, our business lines that grew the most in 2020? Yeah, well, there were really three that stand out. First and foremost was the life insurance business. The life insurance business was up 24%, which is all-time record for Valmark with a 58-year history. It was great to have our best year ever. Uh, Life settlements kind of related to the insurance business. I think with low interest rates, a lot of people saw the need to uh, sell on needed life insurance, and we had a record year as well, being up 25%. And then on the flip side was the asset business. Valmark Wealth Solutions saw assets grow to almost $4 billion, which was 22% growth rate. And together, those three product lines really drove the record year. Well, Caleb, I look back. You, we've been working together for 20 years, and you really helped us start that life settlement business. But uh, in that period of time, we've gone from about $20 million of commissions and fees to just a couple dollars shy of $150 million last year. And it's been fun to see the business change. Now, my favorite business, the one I always talk about, is the life insurance business. <laughs> um, and uh, we saw a significant increase. Really, this is our third year of significant increase in the life insurance business. Again, all driven by variable. If we take out term insurance, 82% of our life insurance commissions are separate accounts. And I really see that as a product that aligns the interest of the consumer with the insurance company. Insurance companies, if they don't want to get a million dollars and have to invest it in bonds that yield less than 3% today, that really is a big part of what we see going on. Yeah, I, I think that point also hits on what you talked about earlier, which was growing firms that have decided to call Valmark home. We've seen a number of firms who've decided to go back and re-register and get their securities license just so they have access to the variable products. Well, if we look back that 20 years since we started the broker-dealer and the RA, the biggest growth over the last 20 years has been on the investment side. Share with some of our results there that led to a great year and, and some of the innovations. Yeah. So I mentioned earlier, almost $4 billion inside of Valmark Wealth Solutions, which is our platform. And then I think the bigger story though, is we've become really focused on best interest, on planning and letting what the client needs be most important to determining the solutions. And together between the broker dealer and the RAA, Valmark has over $16 billion of assets under care now, which is by far a record for us in our history. 
And I think last year was big with record number of cases being submitted, but we actually at the same time had a record service levels, which really goes back to that EAP conversation, e-signature conversation. So really excited to see the investments business doing so well and setting records. Yeah, again, thanks to our teams for a quick innovation in this time of change. Caleb, we've been doing this survey with our member firms, I think going back 15 years, and we saw a 10 point increase in a very important measurement that you decided to put in a couple of years ago. What is a net promoter score? How is it measured? And what did we see in terms of our member firms this year? Yeah, so at the core, a net promoter score is asking uh, or answering a simple question. How likely are you to refer us to a potential customer? And it's a scale of one to 10. And if you answer zero through seven, you're considered a detractor. If you answer an eight, you are considered neutral. So you have to score that as a nine or 10 to be considered a promoter. So basically think of our score, which was 90 by the owners of our firms, nine out of 10 people scored us a nine or a 10, which to put that in perspective, the industry leaders of, if you think of like the hotel industry or the cell phone industry or the entertainment industry, scores in the 60s and 70s are typically industry leaders. And we were fortunate to score a 90 this year by our, our customers that own the member firms. Well, it didn't happen by chance. A lot of hard work by a lot of people. And we've been implementing this EOS strategy for the last couple of years, and you've been leading that. Somebody said it's simple, but it's just not easy. And if your customers are happy and they tell other people your business grows, you keep your current customers. Another measure of success for the last, I think, 12 years, we have been contributing a portion of our profits to the charities of our member firms, some wonderful causes. And as I look at 2020, we will be able to contribute 700 and $50,000 to some wonderful causes that make the world a better place, both here in the U.S. and overseas. So I I feel very, very good about that. Well, I would just like to say thank you. That's one of my motivations. You know, you talk about me being here for 20 years. It's more than business. And this was really your idea. I've had the privilege to to oversee it, but to, to now see over $6 million go around the world and at very grassroots levels to, to help organizations. That's pretty motivating. Thanks for leading that effort. 2020 wasn't just a fluke as we look back at the company's growth, the momentum as we plan for the year ahead. What are some of our main initiatives that will make things better for the firms we serve? Well, we're going to keep going on this theme of technology and innovation of process. We've got the largest budget we've ever set aside to continuously improve that area. I do believe that we are market leaders in both the insurance and the investments business, already having end-to-end electronic workflows from case design all the way to issue, all the way to ongoing management and service of clients. So we're gonna continue to invest in that. And then there are two other really big things from my perspective. The other is succession planning being able to help our member firms put in place continuity and succession plan, I believe is extremely important to their success and to ours long-term. And then last for me, I see, you know, staffing, like you said, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy and helping our member firms get the right people and retain them is really critical to mutual long-term success. So we're going to launch a staffing solution service in 21 and we're excited about that. I'm excited. Even my dad's excited. I'm blessed to still have dad around and he watched all the results and he is just so pleased to see where we've been able to take the company together. But at the core of that is a philosophy that is 58 years old for us and 2000 years old. And that is the golden rule. And it's at the core of what we do. And I think increasingly Belmark is standing apart as it's getting tougher for insurance companies to be profitable and have products that work for the consumers. I think attracting a group of advisors that really want to do the right thing for the clients, help them make choices, help them dissect what seem to be really complex products. That's at the core of what we do. And I think that's the mainspring of our growth. I'd like to close with thanking our internal team members, our member firms at Belmark Financial. We bring the golden rule to life. 